Alright, welcome everybody to another Warcraft 3 match. Apologies for all the Heroes of the Storm content the past few days, but the Nexus contest is keeping me pretty busy. At this point, we have an Orc versus Undead. It's going to be an interesting one. Madfrog goes up against the Orc to the top right here. The German old school Orc player Sokol playing with his account Good Game Life here. And all the way down to the bottom of the map of Twisted Meadows, we're having Madfrog. One of the few Undead players that still sticks in a lot of matchups with a Dreadlord first, goes into Ghouls and Garaks, and actually makes it work. I think by now he's level 40 on the Northrend ladder, and that means that he's in the top 30 of the ladder ranking. He's practicing actually quite a bit and has been streaming a lot of his games as well. You can check him out on Twitch at MattQFrog. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun to actually see him back in the scene. And not only him, I mean, Sokol being back is already amazing. For me personally, I said it before, it's just really nostalgic to see how many old school players are currently coming back to prepare for Warcraft 3 Reforged, and it is pretty amazing. So right now, we have Crypt and Alta opening on the side of Madfrog with the Death Knight first, so there's no early fiends that he rushes into against the Orc opponent. Tomb of Relics comes in too, so very likely we're going to see him with an attempt to harass a little bit. Both of the players, as you can see on the minimap, already attempting to scout and see, okay, what exactly is my opponent up to? Where's the spawn? And we have a Farseer first for Sokol. So no Blade Master shenanigans from him. Trying to uh, very likely also get the early harass going and then maybe even try to go into a bit of a fast attack. Still gets the barracks out on the other hand, so we will see a bit of creeping from him in his perspective. <laughs> and the peon right after the Acolyte here. All of them just double-checking what's happening. Sokol by now, of course, knows also where his opponent spawns. He scouted the left side, didn't see anything, but then ran into the Acolyte, so he knows that bottom left is the spawn position, just from a timing perspective. And Madfrog is gonna try to at least see that main base. Sees the Farseer, sees the shop, goes quickly in and sees everything that's really important to him this early on. Would, of course, prefer to not lose the hero, or sorry, the uh, Acolyte, but at the same time, it's gonna be fine. But as expected, you can see him starting to go straight to the top right, trying to harass now. And in the main base, we can expect the early attack into uh, his tier 2, whereas we are seeing from Sokol already a bit of creeping happening. If you want to set up a harass with a Farseer, then oftentimes having wolves on level 2 is great. If you just get the chain lightning on level 2 and you want to have a quick harass with the shop items, that can work too. Uh, currently, Mad Fog trying to get some experience by taking down the wolves, but Sokol already resummoning them. And that's always the bit of the uh, little trick there. Well, maybe not little trick, but the little play that you have between players, just trying to deny the opponent as much experience as possible. That means killing your own units when they're low, it means resummoning summonings if, uh, when you can, as an orc, for example, just to deny that experience as well. And for now, there's not really too much happening. We've actually so-called just ch uh, checking out the main base. Gonna buy a couple of items here for the healing selves. Tech into tier 2 is already working for him. And we still have those two wolves following Madfrog. And that means that he knows exactly where his opponent is. And therefore can dodge him. And now start another creep towards the top at the expansion. Now, in the early game, especially since there's no Blade Master, is nothing too crazy happening just yet. We're having a little bit of attack on both sides. And this is one of the maps where oftentimes you, in the past, you might have seen uh, gargoyles against other races. As I said before, Madfox sometimes makes that work even against orcs. But for the time being, it's just early on creeping that we're seeing from them. And in terms of items, that's going to be the most important part. It's going to be a big question who gets what. If maybe someone even goes onto the islands and gets the island expansions, that of course would be another thing. If you can take that granite golem down on level 9, that usually spawns quite a lot of good shit. So let's see what exactly Sokol gets here. Both of them just like playing this a little bit more slow, but there's already the ghoul army from Madfrog. And as already called earlier, he loves to play ghouls. He says something dies within him every single time he has to play fiends. He just doesn't enjoy it. I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. I'm 100% with him on that. When uh, the Frozen Throne came out and all of a sudden the Undead strategies shifted away from Ghoul Gargs and heavily focused onto fiends and statues, I was a little bit sad. The cool thing about playing with Ghoul Gargs is just simply that you're pretty fast on the map, you're quite agile and you really want to rush into your opponent, whereas fiends require more of a slower, meticulous style around like coils and keeping individual fiends alive there. Which can be very challenging, obviously, as well, but it loses a bit from that, of that frenzy that you have with ghouls. I mean, quite literally, once that you have your tier 3 and go into ghoul frenzy. In terms of item, parry of the fatality, first item to be taken here by Sokol. 
down to the bottom of the map. We're currently looking at Mad Frog. First of all, with the circle of mobility, but using his ghouls now too to get the forest troll wall out here. No harass happening just yet. He <laughs> baits over that Gnoll Overseer. Gnoll Overseer is just looking over that little edge and says, like, hey, what is this shit? They're killing all the creeps over there. That's fucked up. I need to do something about that. Tries to run down and help out, and well, it's a little bit too late. Maybe saw the army and said, like, okay, this is way too much for me to handle, and then retreats. Great item, by the way, for Mad Frog. It gets the Linehorn of Stormwind, so he's in a great spot at this point. Ooh, we're looking for the surround here. Only seeing the Farseer initially, but then once he sees all of the grunts that are with him, he immediately moves back. And Sokol has the expansion towards the top now. Starts to build an expansion right away. Mad Frog currently doesn't know about that, but he already sent a few units up top. So he's going to be pretty quickly in the know of what's going on here. We're having the graveyard being built by him now, but as you can tell, with his tech into tier 3, he has so far not committed to any real tech structures. We're seeing him with one Crypt Ghouls, so that's all that he goes for now. Undead, of course, has a pretty strong base defense as it stands. Lich second coming in, so he doesn't have any worries when it comes to that. And in the meantime, we're actually seeing the Shadowhunter being played. Now, you always have to be careful and watch out for the Shadowhunter. That's something that we learned back in the old days when Orcish still played. Can't forget about that. That was a perfect example how not to do it. But in this game, I expect that Sokol is going to take a little bit more care about his second hero. That being said, that expansion towards the top should be finished in time for TP. It might actually be close because Sokol completely missed that this army is rushing up top and that might be a big problem for him. So this is going to hurt eventually. I mean, it looks very much like we might see a cancel. And that would be... Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're definitely going to see cancer. I kind of underestimated a little bit how many ghouls there are. Mad Frog with the perfect timing. And that is now annoying as hell for the Orc player. A nice, pro nice attempt here to save the the uh, peon, but that doesn't work out. Okay, gets the Hex, Thun, and Chain Lightning. But Mad Frog... Ooh, even Scroll of uh, Haste, Cross Creep, Speed being used here. Surround attempt. Coil already comes in and he gets it! No, he doesn't! Oh, barely saving the Farseer, or does he? There's still an attempt to go for it. Run, Farseer, run. That wolf is already a little bit out of breath. The ghouls are just going in and, well, they can't run out of breath. They are all dead or undead, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, surround attempt here without any kind of dreadlock shenanigans, only using the aura. <laughs> the Lich, on the other hand, would love to be get close enough so that he can get maybe a quick Nova through, but it doesn't quite work out. Instead, actually didn't go for Nova on level 1, but instead we're seeing the Frost Armor here. So cool by now, how does he react? Main base, we're having him with a double beastery. Wyvern Tech, Wind Rider, and also now tier 3 as the surround holds. Mad Frog actually lands it against the Farseer and forces the town portal of his opponent. Job well done by him. In the main base, on the other hand, we're having him now with tier 3. He already added the slaughterhouse too, so we're going to have those statues coming in. And Ghoul Frenzy is on the way again. Mad Fork, never change. Straight into Ghoul Frenzy here. Ghouls, ghouls, ghouls. No upgrade. Oh, actually, they have a plus 1 attack upgrade already. Okay, fair enough. Same time, we're seeing now with the first few Wind Riders, the attack over at the shop. Trying to get a few more items for himself now. Now one of the big questions is of course definitely going to be how Mad Frog is going to react once that he sees the strategy. Are we going to see fiends being added? Quite likely considering how heavy he commits to his ghouls at this point. Uh, more gargoyles? I kind of doubt it, especially with bad riders being an option, so I wouldn't assume that that's going to be the case. If you look at the items by the way, we have now double claws of attack plus 6. That's probably the moment where Sokol kind of regrets that he didn't go straight into a Blade Master. That would have been really nice damage that he would have been able to push out there. Oh god, did Madfrog just miss the... Uh, okay, the PNC here. Madfrog actually moved in, moved out, and apparently has a patrol set up to check when exactly that base is being built. And he gets the peon again. So Sokol at this point probably going to be a little bit pissed. I mean, I would be. Ah, even the Pit Lord being played. And that's actually great if you're going up against something like Wind Riders. They stack quite nicely, and then if you get your damage reduction through, that's usually pretty solid. But yeah, Sokol must be pretty annoyed right now. He already had the expansion nearly completed, and then it got shut down by the ghoul attack that we saw from Mad Frog. Now he tries it again, and is immediately stopped there too. Builds a burrow once more. Wolf comes in, because... 
Well, you have to get it out of the group. <laughs> I won't be able to do anything. Apparently, we're still stuck in the control group. But both of them, for the time being, just trying to creep a little bit and get the heroes higher. And that makes perfect sense for Mad Frog in particular. And since he wants, of course, those high-level undead heroes. But it also makes a ton of sense for the Orc player, who is currently very interested in having some additional Wind Rider so that he can make those quick snipes against heroes. Potentially with a Hex setup. Hex the Death Knight, kill the Lich, something along those lines. And in terms of items, it doesn't really look too bad either. Sobi Mask, that's always amazing for Shadow Hunter here, Farseer alike, doesn't matter. We're also having him with the Potion of Greater Healing, doesn't get much better than that. And the Potion of Lesser Invulnerability, when you're going up against an Undead player that's going to try and nuke the shit out of you. 48 supply at this point in time against 50, that's what we're seeing here. 50 supply in a little bit in favor of a Mad Frog. And I mean, he has a level 3 Death Knight, he has a level 2 Lich, and of course, in terms of items, he doesn't look too bad either. The Orb of Corruption is by now straight in the hands of the Undead player, but yeah, both of them are just creeping here. And Mad Folk is now trying to set up an expansion by himself. He usually does the Necropolis first. A lot of Undead players will start with the, with the Gold Mine and haunt that, but he always starts with the Necropolis so that he can TP in when need be. And we have him with another level up. Immediately going straight. Ooh, Orb of Darkness even for the Pit Lord. Yeah, Pit Lord is going to be doing a lot of work as you can see. The Howl of Terror and going into the Cleave. And it's going to be really good, especially when we're talking about the Wind Riders. If it gets close enough to get a good Howl in, it's fantastic. Third hero also for our Orc player. By now with a Tower and Chieftain and Stomp on level 1. And this is one of the coolest things when you're an Orc player. If you go into that triple hero selection that we're having now, first of all, I mean, you can play it with a Farseer, you can play it with a Blade Master, it doesn't matter too much. What really matters is that you have, along the Shadow Hunter and the Tower and Chieftain, a lot of CC, a lot of crowd control. You have your Hex on the Shadow Hunter, you have the Warstorm on the Tower and Chieftain, and if you properly stack those two, you can really eliminate the threat that comes from a lot of the pressure that an Undead can execute with those heroes, and that's going to be great. If you are getting a Hex in against the Death Knight, you get the Stomp right after with a good timing, you can accomplish a lot and take him down. And ooh, jeez, the Amulet of Spell Shield for the Farseer. He has some sick items. Sokol has some fantastic items. Has to TP as Mad Folk attacks. Probably gonna try and get at least a few units as a result. And yep, nicely done. Gets at least one ghoul. Might even get a little bit more here. Tauren Chieftain is looking for the storm. Gets slowed by the Frost Nova though. And yeah, Skull of Speed is gonna expire and uh, then he's gonna move away from that. Expansion by the way, or at least the Necropolis, is ready for Mad Frog. He's currently also in his main base with a double crypt. Is not going over 60 sup or over 50 supply just yet. We're seeing basically only the Orc player committing to the low upkeep. At this point, so-called realize that he can't really do too much with the Nova coming through against his units. Has to heal that out too, but still, he's already crossed over into the uh, low upkeep threshold, sitting at 58, and continues creeping. I mean, those heroes are starting to hit pretty high levels. 4, 3, and 1. Mad Frog got a bit more lucky. He's uh, apparently got a Tomb of Experience here as well, and so the Pit Lord is already on level 3 himself. That's pretty sick heroes. It's just like the items that we're seeing on the side of Sokol that are a bit nuts if you ask me. Amulet of Spell Shield has a Potion of Greater Healing, Potion of Lesser Invulnerability. And then again, when we're talking about it, you look towards Mad Frog and you realize that he has a Lion a Horn of Stormwind with the Ghoul strategy that he's currently playing. So, uh, shouldn't probably talk about great items on the side of the Orc player because the Undead has a few that are nothing to sneeze upon either. Another attempt by Soko to get an expansion that becomes a bit of a thing here. In the meantime, Mad Frog already has his completed, only two Acolytes mining, but we also have some units coming over and trying to see if there's an expansion. So Sokol will know in a second. Call Nova against the Raider and the TP out. Doesn't even... Oh, loses one ghoul in the process. And a statue, actually. It's a good snipe, but you can already see the Howl of Terror doing a lot. Minus 15 damage at this point against the Wind Riders. That's pretty fantastic. And it takes the... It takes a little bit of the sting away, quite literally. I mean, uh, those Wind Riders are insanely powerful when they can focus on a single target, especially with the con crowd control that I've been talking about earlier. So that's something that they have to avoid. 55 supply by now for Sokol still. Mad Frog has a lot more money, as you can see. 900 gold, 1,000 gold now, simply because he has that expansion mining. And on top of it, another thing that he has is he did not cross over in the low upkeep until now. He just did that and is currently in his main base producing more and more ghouls. How do you counter Wind Riders? 
get ghouls. <laughs> or at least Madfrog does. So he's going to try and rely only on his Lich and on the uh, the Pit Lord. Has an orb, obviously. Uh, going to try and take down those Wind Riders with uh, skills. And the rest is just hero pressure at the bot lane against, uh, against the bottom of the map. Against all those with all the ghouls already getting some pressure in. Keep the Amulet of Spell Shield in mind on the other hand though. It is at this point going to be pretty helpful. But it's on the TC since he's very far out. So that's one thing to really consider here. And Madfog is just building more ghouls. 61 supply for him. We're having so cool at this point. Looking at 58 and Madfog just dancing around. Nicely done though, just zoning his opponent out from the expansion. But yep, for the time being, both of them just like trying to see, okay, what are we gonna do here? <laughs> and there's a fair amount of ghouls with two one upgrades already. Two attack upgrade, one armor upgrade, and he's just dancing around the entire time. And we have him with more ghouls. That's how you counter air. <laughs> Goes in immediately, and here we go. The party is on, and immediately both of the heroes with orbs are starting to focus straight onto the Wind Riders. We're having also the ghouls just heavily, heavily pressuring those heroes in the back, especially of course the Farsi and the Shadow Hunter, but at least two fiends in the army to get a few webs through and make sure that those ghouls are going to be useful. That's the ones that he has to keep alive for, of course. Another level up as the Shadow Hunter hits level four and immediately the focus onto the TC and he goes down. Level up for the Farsi, but the Tower and Chieftain is eliminated as we're seeing Madfrog with the scroll protection rattling and trying to get a couple of more hits in. The fiends in the back line not actually attacking those Wind Riders, need to web those, but they're completely zoned out. In the meantime, the Howl of Terror is just completely negating most of the damage that we're seeing from the Wind Riders as they're focusing one ghoul after another. Surround attempt again against the Farseer, but Sokol micros it away. His own expansion at the top by now also up and running, but Madfrog here in this fight is still going full ham. 51 supply against 49 at this point in time. Madfrog still in the low upkeep and is going in again, trying to take these Wind Riders down. And finally, the Fiends are starting to web one after another two. Another level up here as we see the pit lord hit level four level three level four for the lich right now it's getting a little bit dangerous for sokol here he's actually getting completely wrecked in this fight took a lot of ghouls down too though something we should definitely point out as well his farsia is by now level five and his shadow hunter is level four still has most of his items here coil nova again well scratch that only getting the call through here but damn that hurt has the potion of less invulnerability, so he can still survive if need be. In comes the attack again. Another coil, another Nova. Shadow Hunter in trouble. And able to heal himself and move out. But Mad Folk now full on the offense. Going straight in here. Expansion is mining, but only one PN in. And Mad Folk could definitely try and take that down, though. Not even sure if he knows about it at this point in time. Farseer comes back out, and with all the AoE damage, all of a sudden the ghouls are not looking too healthy anymore either. Especially with only a single statue being in. Oh, the TC! The cow is down again! Beef for dinner as Mavfrog wants to have a little bit more food for the ghouls. Move straight in, but those level 3 wolves are definitely hurting right now with a critical. Always sneaking in, of course, too. Shadow wolves doing work, and with that, we're having so-called push Mavfrog back. The ghouls, great. They're cheap. They can be strong, but at the same time, they're, of course, also quite weak in hit points. 340, the only thing. A few more fiends being built by now by Mavfrog. Also has a sacrificial pit, so we're gonna see a little bit of shade action from him. But one of the biggest assets for an undead player are always his heroes. And we have him with one, two scrolls of healing still. There's a lot of strong items here, regardless. And is at this point in time sitting at still uh, 51 supply. Needs to actually kill something. Either commit to the low upkeep or kill something. Shade is already there, and those wolves are going to be a pest for the entire time. You need to have a couple of ziggurats here, at least one to make sure. Or uh, maybe keep a destroyer around, something along those lines, in the Rubian Tower maybe, just to make sure that you can deal with the harass, because that's something that Sokol is just going to do throughout the entire game. He's going to make sure that he has as much of that as he can. Couple of fiends, rest ghouls. By now, Sokol also, making sure that he's mining from two bases. And this is actually still pretty close. I mean, the one big advantage that we are seeing for Madfog right now is definitely the hero levels. The level 5 Death Knight has a level 4 Lich and level 4 Pit Lord. It's pretty decent, especially when that TC on the other side is still level 2. Hasn't really leveled up yet. But then again, uh, the Farsi has on 5, so that Chain Lightning is going to hurt soon. 
Very unlikely that he's going to go for Earthquake on uh, level 6, so a level 3 Chain Lightning and level 3 Wolves would be quite the problem. And you have also the Shadow Hunter here to consider. This is still pretty much up in the open, to be fair. And we have great items on both sides, with a lot of potions of lesser invulnerability, by the way, on the side of the Orc player at this point. On the Farseer has one on the Shadow Hunter, and the TC still has the potion of greater healing. So taking those Orc heroes down is not gonna be easy by any means. And by now we're having also two watchtowers being built up here and there's no more single ghoul worker line harass going to be happening from Mad Frog's perspective. He still has that expansion up but hasn't really built any static structures for defense yet. Instead we're seeing him moving around here with 70 supply against the 50 that we have for Sokol and just trying to manually defend this. He has the shade that helps him against those wolves too. But in the meantime a little bit of a sneak around strategy from his opponent. So, ooh, running straight into the ghouls. That was actually, I would say, lucky for Madfog that he sees that. If that wasn't the case, that army would have moved immediately straight into the expansion and probably taken down quite a fair amount of units. In come the wolves again, trying to make that happen. Ha! <laughs> Even a little bit of creeping happening here. But Madfog has, of course, already sniffed out where his opponent is. Finally level 3 for the tower and chieftain. And Sokol might just take this fight. With the level 3 TC and now the level 2 Stomp, he can definitely make that play and he is currently trying to at least get a few of these units down. Howl of Terror is in, Sokol tries to snipe one or two units, but moves out, uses the TP, has the wolves harassing the expansion though. It is annoying as an undead player that all of your acolytes are just basically presented on a silver platter here against your opponent. So very heavy damage already coming in and <laughs> to be honest with you, my frog might just lose this. Scratch the might, like if the repair doesn't come in immediately, he's definitely gonna lo he lose it. Oh, he might barely be able to save it. Ooh, he has to know by it. Oh, <laughs> that was clutch. That was clutch. Barely able to save the haunted gold mine. Was a close one. The ghoul just now double checking what's happening down here, but it's a little bit too late to see those two towers coming up. Also, another expansion by Sokol. Sokol is at this point going full rat style and just builds expansions everywhere on the map. He throws out the towers, he just makes sure that he has now with a tiny great hall another expansion in play. And that is actually pretty good strategy from his point of view. Just set this up, make sure that you keep the under player small, don't allow him to expand again, and play around that. And the problem is, if you're an under player and you're going up against that particular Farseer style, then uh, the late game is difficult for you to set additional expansions up if you, the Orc player is diligent about scouting and uses those wolves. 2-2 two, two upgrades still for the ghouls, and we're seeing by now 54 supply for Sokol. And at the same time, you look over towards Madfrog and he's still sitting at 70. So he could still go a little bit higher before he hits the high upkeep but a pretty decent army for him regardless. And since also, I like it, very diligent from him, sending those units across the map and still scouting what's happening here. And with Ghoul Frenzy and those upgrades, that expansion is just not gonna make it. Pretty cool move by him. For this one, he's a little bit too late though. The expansion's already up, turrets are being built as well, and uh, Sokol is now looking at this saying like, okay, this is fine, I got double turret here, looking solid. Still builds Wind Riders in his own main base. Zero upgrades, by the way, for them, so hasn't really gotten anything here. Another attempt for a quick fight. Already looking for the surrounds. Here comes the Tower and Chief, then with a stomp, and again the Town Portal. Makes his way out of dodge. Ah, Sokol doesn't really want to fight yet. He's building up his army, he's trying to rely on the strong economy that he has. Another attempt to save an expansion here, this time by the Orc player, but yep, had to cancel. But at least does cancel. <laughs> I mean, we have seen a couple of bases that actually made it, uh, didn't make it through, or were completely taken out and not cancelled. So all of the gold was lost, didn't uh, re get refunded anything. The base here is fairly safe, though. Two turrets, getting a second one in, and with all those watchtowers in play, what are you going to do here? Again, the attack by Mad Fog. Now sitting at 68 supply against the 58 that we have for so called upgrades for Mad Fog by now 3 and 2. Ghouls got another one, and we're seeing them moving in. But here comes the all player. Mad Fog is trying to push the agenda. He realizes that at some point he's going to run into a little bit of trouble. In the main base, there's no gold mine anymore, so he has only the one up to the top left, where Sokol is currently mining from two additional gold mines. That's pretty solid. Down at the bottom of the map, by the way, and another attempt to get a turret in. That didn't work out either. So the attempts of Sokol to get a third base established are currently not working out for him. Or third mining base, I should say. This point, 
61 supply against 72. Mad Fox still relying on those heavy hero levels that he has and is trying to look for a bigger win. Full on ground style. Here comes the AoE. Shockwave would have actually been a really nice alternative here for the Tower and Chieftain, but how often do you actually play against an under player that uses ghouls against Orc? Already, here come the Chain Lightnings. He's trying to take the Fiends down. Good idea by Sokol, trying to make sure that those A units reign supreme for a little bit longer. Howl of Terror coming in, trying to reduce the damage output for the Windride as every single one of the ghouls focuses on the TC. The TC himself has to get the potion here. Uses the potion of greater healing, still has the amulet of spell shield in his inventory to make sure they can't be nuked into a Oblivion, but the Wind Riders are starting to fall here as we're seeing Mad Fog drop down to 62 supply against the 53 of so called the German Orc player trying the best he can here. Again, the Chain Lightning comes in. The healing waves, of course, too. And with every single stomp, those heroes are stunned out and can't do anything. Wind Rider after Wind Rider is falling, but a fair amount is still in play. And without any destroyers whatsoever, those of wolves are doing so much damage right now too. Again, the pressure onto the Shadow Hunter and the TC. And the SH goes down. Nice kill by Mad Frog. Has already the Lich up on level five. The Death Knight closing in on six. We're even seeing the Pit Lord on level five. And with those heavy nukes with the Coil and Nova on level three. There's just no way to keep that shuttle al under life in that circumstance. So many potions of invulnerability already used and anything uh, that the Orc throws against the under player is currently without success. 57 supply against 36 and again Sokol says I need to stop him from mining. So he sends the wolves over to the left side of the map. There's only one Nerubian tower, that's all that he has, and Sokol is still mining from two bases. He's mining here, he's mining up at the top, and he's already starting to rebuild the pressure against the backline. Right now, another Wind Rider goes down. Sokol is at 32 supply at this point in time. He has the TC still in and is putting enormous pressure onto the Lich himself, but the Death Knight still has enough mana to get an easy little three call out, and that puts the Lich back to full HP. The Death Knight himself, on the other hand, needs to be a bit more careful because so those Chain Lightnings, they definitely hurt, as already mentioned before. TC attack gets a potion of healing, and Sokol still fights. He holds on to that game as much as he can, and he has the resources, of course, too, to make that happen. Goes in with the Wolves again, puts the pressure onto not only the Death Knight, but also the Pit Lord. Does he have another Chain Lightning? If he could get, take down the DK, that would be fantastic, but he loses the Raider. And we still have mining going on up at the top. The shop is done down here on the other hand. Mining as well. And still Mad Frog not expanding again. Mad Frog only relying on this one gold mine over here. And he has resources. He's sitting at 440 gold. But he goes to the shop and tries to buy himself a couple more items. Only a single statue for him. But those heroes levels are just out of this world at this point in time. But he doesn't expand again. And as I say it, I realize I'm lying. Because up to the top he has set up another one. Mad Fog now on two bases. Two mining ones against what we're seeing from his opponent here. And they're going in straight away. Nope. Sees the towers and says like, alright, I can't really go into that. That's not going to work out. And Sokol has the time to rebuild his army. Sokol has un been under so much pressure, I wouldn't really be surprised if he turns into a diamond at any moment. I mean, right now he's looking at a level 5 Farsia, level 4 Shadowhunter. The TC is still only level 3. And he's just trying to take these bases out. But in comes Mad Frog. He keeps the pressure up. He goes straight into the main base again. Tries to also take down those production buildings. Up here in every single one of those burrows to at least get some pressure out here. In comes Mad Frog into the main base. But already towards the expansion, we have Sokol trying to take this one down. Guess what's missing? It's a Necropolis. Nothing you can do about it right now. Big Storm comes in and goodbye Acolytes. All of them are going down here. Even Andy. The last remaining survivor here. Level 5 on the Shadow Hunter. Another great setup for him. And we're having now the main base basically completely destroyed. But Sokol has money! He still has money! And he's using it. He can just rebuild production structures. He can build and just get items. Already working on those Orc Burrows. Sending in a few more units down to the expansion to finally stop Mad Frog completely from mining. That gold mine is not going to run out of gold anytime soon. Another base being built. Once again, Sokol is trying to set up another watchtower here. And this time Mad Fog doesn't have any ghouls around. Mad Fog is just trying to clean house right now. He's just saying, all right, let's take these bases down. Let's eliminate the tech. Let's make sure that he doesn't have enough uh, supply. 
But the expansion is suffering, and Madfolk has to rebuild Acolytes at this point. And we are seeing the entire Orc army around. He can just go in for Chain Lightning. Does exactly that and takes down the Acolytes. One down, two down, and Madfolk is starting to have a bit of a problem here. He's looking at decent supply with a 65 that he owns against the 43 of Sokol. But when you look at the uh, position on the map, the economy is not really that good for Madfolk at all. It's fantastic still for Sokol. But of course, he doesn't have enough tech structures. Again, the attempt to take down the Necropolis itself, trying to shut down the entire base as quickly as he can. And he's doing well with that. No more TPs for Madfog. Gets the Ziggurat as well. And he's trying to snipe the gold mine and should be able to pull that off, to be honest with you. TPing out maybe a little bit early, but the Potion of Lesser Invulnerability saves the Shadow Hunter. The base, on the other hand, is still in play too. And the first Acolyte is making its way over for the repairs. Yeah, saw what's happening down here, but the first tower is already in play. And this is already a bit of a sore spot in uh, Mad Fox's side. I mean, at this point, he really has to think, I need to also deal with that, because if I don't, he's just going to build more watchtowers, he's going to build another expansion. I have to take this down as long as it's still small. And that's what he's probably going to try and do. Shadow Hunter on 5, Torrent Chief, then nearly 4, gets more items, has also a mana potion by now, and more and more mining for Sokol. Still in the no upkeep. Mad Fox, of course, for most of this time, has been in low upkeep, so he's been paying the price for that as well, paying the taxes, death and taxes. The only thing that he can be certain of. And to the left side, again, the attempt to take down the base completely. But even if he doesn't, there's not going to be any mining for Mad Frog. Mad Frog is still looking at those 64 supply and he might have a shit ton of wood, but he just doesn't have a whole lot when it comes to his gold and the income. And eventually he might not even be able to build Acolytes. So right now, the attack here towards the back, by the way, as mentioned before, look at that. Another structure being built, trying to save the PO now by building a burrow. Sokol is playing it smart. He's playing it incredibly smart, and he is just absolutely starving Madfrog from resources. But those heroes are still a problem. I mean, Madfrog has insane heroes now. Three Coil, three Nova, and he has also, of course, the Howl of Terror on level three on top of that. It's a tricky game. It's an insane game. It's honestly crazy. What Madfo can still do is unsummon a couple of structures in the main base. That's definitely still an option for him. And he has still some mining going here, but <laughs> I mean, it's a single acolyte. And Sokol is going to send soon enough some additional wolves over. For now, though, the attack at the expansion. So many turrets. So many towers. The Lich! No way! He actually snipes it! The Lich goes down, another level up for the Death Knight, but it's too late and we have a level 6 on the Farsia as well. That Chain Lightning will be 3 any second and that's going to hurt and it's going to hurt a lot already. We're seeing Madfrog crashing in again right into the turret range. Gets at least the Raider eliminated, but it alone doesn't really help him here. 2,900 gold at this point in time for Sokol. The German Orc player is doing fantastic in this late game on Twisted Meadows. Again, the attempt to take down the Raiders at least, but that level 3 healing wave is rattling through the army and keeps everything alive that Madfrog tries to eliminate. Once again, we're having another storm coming through. The healing wave, that tower and chieftain is not going to die anytime soon, or is he? Tries to stay alive here, heavily surrounded. Madfog wants the kill, he's greeting for the kill, and he might actually get it. Another healing wave, but here comes the final blow, and the TC, no way, no, what? The TC gets away, no, he doesn't. 11 hit points, but falls in the end. The counter kill, as we're seeing Sokol with 3,800 gold. You gotta be shitting me. What do you wanna do? You wanna open a Swiss bank account or what's going on here? He needs to build some structures to build stuff, heavily reliant instead onto heroes and items, which is a fair approach too, but he definitely needs something to get rid of all that gold. 4,100 right now. He has so much stuff. Two heroes, that's all that we're seeing at this point in time for Sokol. Another quick coil to drop that radar in the back, but the Fiend falls as a result. 39 supply for Sokol. 25 for Madfog. Madfog incredibly low now. But then again, let's face it, this late into the game, you're going to rely as an undead player on your heroes anyways, and that's exactly what he does. A 6 Lich. The Pit Lord on level 5. We could see an ultimate from the Pit Lord here. We could actually see that happen in this game. I mean, that Lich, if he wouldn't have fallen, if Sokol wouldn't have done such a great job of locking him down and taking him apart, might have been level 6 by now already. 
And we have now the chain lighting on three for the Farsia, the Wolves on three. This game is getting nuts, and look at that. Finally, double barracks being built here on the side of Sokol. Can just get his entire tech back up. Should still have a peon down here somewhere, but the problem is he doesn't have a lot of wood. That's one of the things he still needs to do. Already the Great Hall is being upgraded, but producing a couple of additional peons to just get wood here might be a good idea. I would love it even more if he would just get a shredder. Just get a shredder at this point. Move in, get the shredder, be done with it. Make sure that you get the resources, uh, that you can uh, build everything else. I mean, right now, we still have that Torrent Chieftain on level 4. <laughs> the game isn't over by a long shot. I mean, both of them are still fighting for it. Mad Fork is very well in know that with his heroes alone, he can basically defeat a small army. I mean, that Death Knight... We still have that extra aura also. The line on of Stormwind is great. And the Death Knight, of course, has now the aura on three, has the coil on three. Just the regeneration and the speed through the aura alone allows him to go for a hit and run style the entire game. This late in the game, units don't play as much of a role anymore. Especially since at this point in time, Sokol can only rely on tier one units. He's still trying to get the stronghold back in so that he can play around that. But things are looking a bit more difficult for him. I love this on the other hand, the attempt to attack with the Wind Riders, but he just doesn't see those fiends coming in time. And then we have that little move right here. Could go old school to be honest, could just go here, research burrow and have one fiend or two fiends burrow right here. And whenever those Wind Riders come in, you just use that and immediately take them down to kill them. Already a war mill being built down here. So Sokol is slowly and steadily taking control of this game. But what an, what an insane game, I mean this series has been nuts so far. Six Farseer, we have the Shadow Hunter, <laughs> nearly in level six as well. I would love to see Big Bad Voodoo come in at one point. I highly doubt that's going to be the case. Even if he hits level six, you're gonna go into that hex on level three. But it would just be absolutely fantastic to see that work out for them. The base down to the bottom right, by the way. Now Stronghold is done, so he can go into additional attack. And with Mad Frog, we now have his Lich back to business as well. And that's one of the main things he was waiting for the entire time. Still no base over here, so it doesn't have that. No one, by the way, ever moved into uh, one onto one of the islands. And even more scouting happening from Sokol. From Sokol's perspective, the one thing that he has to make sure of is don't allow him to expand again. Harass that one expansion as much as you can. Harass the shit out of it. But at the same time, make sure that there is no other base that your opponent sneaks in. That's going to be the most important thing. And so far, Sokol is doing well with that. And you look at his gold, and he has 4,300. His biggest problem was really, first, the lack of tech the entire time, the lack of wood, and also the lack of production structures after his main base got taken out. So he had to be really careful here. And he has, like, two grunts. I don't even know, yeah, I don't even know why Sokol turns around here. He should just, like, say, okay, fuck it, I'm going again, and I'm going to take down that expansion, just snipe it. Even if he just drops the gold mine, that alone would already be enough, and he's already moving in. Get the Acolytes here, two level three chain lightning, there it is. The repair of Madfog is already on, but that's going to be a snipe. And, yep, you might not e be able to build too many units because you don't have the wood, but you can be paid uh, by town portals as many as you want. Farsia... Tauren Chieftain and Shadowhunter with a little army that he had. Take down the gold mine and he TPs out. Bottom right, another base being built. Sokol is in such a fantastic spot right now. But for the love of God, buddy, just get a shredder. Just get a shredder right now. I mean, yes, you have a couple of peons mining, but there, it's right there. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's sexy. It's the Temple of Boom. Goblin, Goblin Observatory. Just take it, buy it, and then you're going to be gold. But, Madfog is still holding on to that. And he is playing a little bit of, uh, I mean, he's really trying to fight that, that army. The problem is really that those pesky wolves are always sneaking in. And this is the biggest problem that he has right now. Somehow dealing with those wolves and at the same time trying to apply some additional pressure as well. And it's not really working out for him. He's trying to take them down again, always having the shades for them, just to see those wolves the entire time. Here comes the storm once more. We're seeing the Death Knight with a potential snipe. Uh, doesn't use the coil for the Wind Rider. Instead, it's the statue, actually, that gets focused down by Sokol. Well done. Take the sustain away from the undead. Here comes the Hex. He's trying to go for the Lich. The stomp is hitting. It's hitting hard, and that's the kill. The CC coming through for Sokol. Perfect play by him, and that should be game even. With the Lich already down, now the Pit Lot is being surrounded too, and he can again use Hex, use the stomp. He will do both, and that's going to be the Pit 
Midlord eliminated, has a potion of invulnerability, uses that barely, gets level 6, but again, at this point in time, it looks pretty much lost. There's the end snare, immediately goes in with the entangle, and that is just a little bit too much. Down goes the Death Knight. What a game, and so called with a victory here in the end. The Doom Guard comes through, but that's not going to be making any difference. Death Knight dead. And now, of course, there's little else you can do. 5,500 gold on the side of Sokol. By now, he has also a fair amount of wood. So even if that fight doesn't go in his favor, he can still rebuild his army now that he finally has the wood resources to keep doing that. There's the GG. And a great game ends with Sokol being victorious over Madfrog. Good job and well done. Good game to come back into Warcraft 3 right now. I hope that you guys enjoyed the match. And if you did... Make sure that you hit that sub button. I'm going to see you soon for more Warcraft 3 content. Have a good one. Bye-bye.